Welcome to the Fearless Health Podcast with host Dr. Anne-Marie Barter. Dr. Barter is on a mission to help people achieve their health and wellness goals and help men and women live their best lives fearlessly. Dr. Barter is the founder of Alternative Family Medicine and Chiropractic in Denver and Longmont, Colorado. Should I take oral ibuprofen when I've had an injury? This is a super common question I get asked about all the time for pain. Will ibuprofen help me heal faster and help with my pain and inflammation? Stay tuned to find out the answer to this commonly asked question. My name is Dr. Anne-Marie Barter, and I am the host of Fearless Health Podcast, and I'm so grateful to have you guys here with us today. If you like what we're saying, please subscribe below and say hello and give us a five-star review. When my patients present into my office, they generally present with a mix of fatigue, sleeplessness, bowel issues, pain, weight gain, bloating. It's a pretty rough combination of symptoms and definitely a combination of injuries. We start working through their case. Questions tend to come up about what do I do if the pain flares again? What do I do if I get into a bad situation? Is it best to take ibuprofen or is it best to take ibuprofen after I get a treatment? This is a tricky question because our first response is to make the pain stop. I mean, clearly, who wants to be in pain? More evidence has been coming out recently that ibuprofen might actually impede the healing process. Stay tuned below for a study that might contradict what you think. There are two common injuries that occur. There is a micro trauma and a macro trauma. We're gonna break these two down. A micro trauma is if you've had a major event like a car accident and now you have pain. That pain could be neck pain, back pain, or a headache. But most people are familiar with this. They had X event, like a car accident, and now they have neck pain, cause and effect. They know the car accident was the cause of their neck pain. It's pretty straightforward and clear. Microtrauma, on the other hand, is a little bit more subtle because the injury happens over, over time with repeated trauma. And this can be, say, issues with posture. So say you had a great ergonomic desk at your, at your job. And when you start working from home, your feet were up and you were kind of slumped over your computer. And after about six months of this new workstation, you start to develop neck pain. The reason for that is your posture at your workstation is inappropriate and something is happening called creep. Creep is not a creepy neighbor. Creep is what happens to your muscles when you stay in an inappropriate posture generally longer for 45 minutes. You start to get micro tears in those muscles and that is a micro trauma. And guess what develops? Something called scar tissue. This injury feels like it comes out of nowhere when you're performing a task that you have performed a hundred times before and suddenly your back goes out or you can't stand up and the injury like does not seem like it should have such severe consequences. Like picking something up off the ground, suddenly you can't stand all the way up or pulling groceries out of your car. So what ends up happening is over time, you start to get these micro tears and your body says, hold on, this is becoming scary. So it lays down scar tissue every which way. And guess what? After a long period of time, that muscle no longer stretches. And so an example of this would be bending over your computer, your head is forward as you're typing. And guess what? You get these micro traumas, you get the tearing here, and then the scar tissue lays down to support that area. It's actually a protective mechanism. We all bend, lift, twist, text, fall, shovel, and even some of us have babies. This causes trauma in our bodies, either micro or macro trauma. And so we cannot avoid trauma. It is going to happen. 
So let's look at the studies around ibuprofen and healing. Oral ibuprofen interferes with cellular healing responses in Achilles tendinopathy. The background on this study is the attempted healing of a tendon after an acute injury, either overloading, a partial tear, or a complete rupture. The normal wound healing cascade involves a multitude of different things, including inflammation and matrix remodeling. Depending on the degree of trauma and the nature of the post-injury, post-injury pain relief is often achieved with NSAIDs, such as ibuprofen. However, there is, an inc there is increasing evidence that NSAID usage may interfere with the healing process. This study aimed to investigate the cellular mechanism by which ibuprofen therapy might lead to a worsening of tendon pathology. They started dosing ibuprofen three days after the initial injury. So it's in the acute phase of the injury. And they continued dosing ibuprofen for 22 days afterwards. Biomechanical properties of tendons were evaluated by tensile testing. That's strength and biochemical wound healing. What they concluded from the study is that the use of ibuprofen for pain relief during that inflammatory process of tendinopathy, aka the acute phase, when they start dosing at three days, might interfere with the normal process of extracellular matrix remodeling in inflammatory and wound healing genes. It's proposed that the known anti-inflammatory effect of ibuprofen has detrimental effects on the turnover of a pro-inflammatory matrix produced in response to soft tissue injury, thus preventing the switch to cellular responses associated with functional matrix remodeling and eventual healing. This basically just says that dosing ibuprofen in the acute phase for pain relief is going to prolong the healing process and the tendon is not going to be so strong. So what the heck do I take instead? There's another study that talks about the efficacy and safety of curcumin compared with ibuprofen in patients with knee osteoarthritis. So what they did was they wanted to determine the efficacy of curcumin for pain relief against um, ibuprofen, and they wanted to see uh, which group had the most functional improvement. So they took 367 patients that had osteoarthritis or arthritis of the knee. They all had a pain score of five or higher, and they were randomized to receive ibuprofen, 1,200 milligrams per day, or curcumin, 1,500 milligrams per day for four weeks. Here are the results. 185 and 182 patients were randomly assigned to either their curcumin group and or the ibuprofen group. The baseline characteristics were no different between the two groups. Um, they noted that abdominal pain or discomfort did actually happen and was significantly higher in the ibuprofen group than in the curcumin group. They looked at both groups and most subjects, 96 to 97 percent, which is a huge number, were satisfied with the treatment. Two thirds rated themselves as improved in a global assessment. So the conclusion of the study looked at that curcumin extracts are as effective as ibuprofen for the treatment of knee osteoarthritis. And the side effect profile was similar, but with fewer gastrointestinal reports in the curcumin group. I mean, what a relief. That's huge. I mean, that's huge. So I just want people to know that they actually do have options when it comes to 
pain management. And I want you to be able to fully heal and not just create a band-aid for yourself. So as always, thank you so much for listening. And we're so grateful to have you here. And if you like what we're doing, please subscribe and comment below and say hello. We want to hear from you and tell us below what you want to hear more of. And we will do our best to try to accommodate that. And we have some new exciting topics coming in the new year. Um, so be sure not to miss out. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.